My next guest does not need an introduction, but of course he's coming off a big win a couple weeks ago over Dan Ige at UFC Fight Night back on September 23rd. It is Bryce Mitchell live from the farm right now. Bryce, how are you, man? I'm doing great, brother. Thank you for the introduction, and I'm glad to be here. Yeah, it's good to talk to you, man. It won't keep you too long away from the farm work. I know you got a lot going on, but, uh, you know, going into the fight with Ige, I know there was a lot sort of going into it. You were coming off the loss and the layoff, and there was all this stuff I know with your ex that you were dealing with. Just how much pressure was there going into the fight? Well, I just wanted to win really bad, but that's with every fight. So uh, I really, I don't know. I guess I responded well to the pressure. I was praying about it a bunch. I know that. And so if anything helped me deal with it, I would say the all, the amount of prayer that I did before the fight uh, really helped me uh, be successful. Yeah, and, and it was a great performance uh, over a really uh, tough veteran in, in Dan Ige. And this was a fight I, I know we had spoken about years ago. There was talk of you guys fighting. Now that it's finally over, I know you and Dan are very respectful, but that's got to feel like a good win to have under your belt over a really tough guy in Dan Ige. Oh, yeah, there's no denying that Dan Ige can fight and fight very well. And, you know, now I got a win over him, so it makes me look better. And, uh, you know, I'm excited about the next fight. I don't know what's going to happen, but I've been praying that something good happens. Was there anything about Dan uh, that surprised you in the fight that you weren't expecting? I mean, I wasn't expecting him to be as good as he was, but, yeah, he's good. And uh, he's even better than I thought, and I knew he was good going into the fight. And... Uh, yeah, he's, he's very good. And the next guy he fights, he's probably going to knock him out. And then then people will understand that what I did takes a tremendous amount of skills. So that's the plan there. Just keep fighting and keep getting bigger fights. Now, I'm assuming the bet wasn't still on. If you remember a couple of years ago on Twitter, uh, there was, I believe, his old manager that he was working with said that Dan would submit you. Do you remember this from a couple of years back? Are you talking about Alia? I am, yes, yeah. Yeah, he's all talk, man. We can still grapple. If he wants to grapple, I'll do it for free. He don't got to pay me nothing because he's a cheapskate because he offered to do it and pay me. Why don't he just grapple me for free? Take the money out of it if that's what he's scared about because he's the one with millions of dollars, right? Mm -hmm. He's the one bragging about having $10,000 to grapple me. Well, heck, if you're so rich and can throw around money like that, that's nice for you, but that's not even my incentive. I'd like to just grapple the guy because he said he wants to grapple me. Yeah, I'm glad that you brought that up because I do remember that, and he never... He never like, paid you, right? Because I think that well, I, th I think the talk was in the fight that he would actually submit you or, or, or take care of business, and obviously you got the win there. Well, I, oh, I thought you were talking about, like, the manager... The dude's name. Oh, just grappling him. Oh, yeah, that's right. I guess there was that part of it, too. But I thought initially when the fight, when there was talk about you guys fighting, I thought initially he said that Dan would submit you. Maybe I got that wrong, but uh, you you let me know. You're you're the guy that they're going after, right? So, Well, this is this is from my understanding of what happened. Now, Ali yeah. Abdelaziz, he, met, he tagged me on something on Twitter because everybody was telling me about it. They said, hey, this is easy $10,000. He said, Bryce, I want to grapple you. And oh, okay. Uh, he said, I want to grapple you, you know, no strikes. No, there's no talks of strikes. He sounded a little bit scared because usually when people call me out, they say they want to punch me, but he sounded scared to punch. And he said, I wanted to grapple you for $10,000. Now I professionally fight for a living. So when somebody said they want to pay me $10 to, to play grab ass. Yeah. Or I mean, $10,000 to play grab ass where you're not even punching. I said, yeah, sign me up for that. And he never followed up. That dude don't want to grapple me certainly don't want to fight me so i don't know why a manager a very successful manager is talking about grappling or fighting any type of fighter who actually really wants to fight and grapple and get paid for it you know that's just it's like dangling a piece of bacon in front of a dog <laughs> but i'm on a bite <laughs> <laughs> yeah, for sure. For sure. No, no, absolutely. Absolutely. And and I think another big part of your win, uh, you know, there, there was that great moment after the fight uh, where, you know, you wanted to do a prayer with Dan and you brought the Bible into the octagon. I wanted to know what the feedback was like from that, because I know there's a lot of religious people that are, you know, very happy to see you speak out about that and just talk about prayer and everything else. I've got a bunch of positive feedback from it, and I'm really happy about it. And uh, just for future warning, I probably will not ever bring a Bible into the octagon again, but the Holy Spirit compelled me to do it that fight, and that's why I did it, because I felt like I was called to do it. I don't know exactly all the reasons behind it, but I, I know that I was, I felt like I was called by God to do that. There's nothing that was going to stop me, and the feedback from it was. 
was positive and um I, I probably won't be walking out with the bible again but that's just something that i wanted to do had a very strong urge to do it why wouldn't you bring it out again were you told not to or you just felt it's something that you know took away from the fight or what was the reason why you don't think you'll do it again because it'd be unnecessary to do okay. it again I, I i would almost uh I don't know. It just, it would be unnecessary. I, very, I made it very clear where I stand. I stand with Jesus Christ. And I just wanted that to be known. And I feel like it is now. And I, I feel like the mission was accomplished. And now I'm on the greater missions. And, uh, you know, what, what, things that I do are more important than that symbolic gesture right there, holding the Bible up. How I live my life is more symbolic of my relationship with Jesus uh, than me just holding up a Bible. So that's really what I'm focusing on is living my life in a correct way that I can. But that one act did feel very good. And I was talking to God, I believe. And, and I'm sure we could do an entire podcast on this topic, but you know, how much do you feel like people in today's day and age, especially in North America, need religion in the sense that I feel like we've kind of lost our way. You know, you see a lot of the things that are happening on social media, some of the things that people are doing, uh, we're, we're more divided than ever. It seems like religion is a way to kind of give you a good, you know, catalyst on how to live your life. Uh, how much do you feel like we, we've kind of lost our way a bit? Well, I do believe in the book of Revelation that it's going to be proven true, which means that we've totally lost the way. When, when Revelation unfolds in real life, that means that we have completely lost the way. I do believe that we're living in the times of Revelation, and no man knows the day nor hour of this Armageddon that the Christians speak of. So that's not what I'm here to say, is that that's going to happen, but um, it could, and there are signs that our society is heading towards that destruction uh, from within. There's a lot of signs, and uh, but I mean biblical signs is what I mean, not just uh, common sense. Like you can look and see the corruption and how the all the wealth is being transferred into a small group of people. Um, but that, that's going to lead towards that Antichrist that Revelation talks about. Here's another thing. What I'm talking about when I say there's been things coming true that we have signs of, I'm talking about the Euphrates River drying up. The army of 200 million to the east, you know, stuff that Revelation says word for word. And uh, th th that's the signs that the Christians have that, um, to, to be aware but not scared, you know. Absolutely. Absolutely. Well, on, on a positive note, because we're always positive around here, uh, when do you want to have that next fight? It looks like all the cards for the rest of the year are kind of filled up. Um, are you looking to fight next year, or when, when do you kind of think you'll, you'll take that next fight? Um, I'm on a, like five more weeks of medical suspension, so I reckon in like six weeks they'll offer me something, but we'll see. They can't legally offer me anything for like five more weeks. Okay. Is, is there any opponents in mind? So I don't really have a lot of control over who I fight. So I basically just want to fight whoever they tell me. And I've been praying about it, but that's all I can do is pray for a great matchup. And I think something great will happen. Yeah. Yeah. I know that we're looking forward to it. Um, we've obviously got a big fight coming up this Saturday. Uh, the new fight, which is Islam Mahashev and Alex Volkanovsky. How do you think that rematch will go with Volk taking it on about 10 days uh, notice? I think that the short training camp will make it a little bit harder on Volkanovski, but I also thought he won the first fight, and if he can make small adjustments, uh, he'll really win the second fight even better. But yeah. I, I thought he won the first fight, but it was close either way. Yeah. Well, what about the co-main event now with Usman, Kamaru Usman, moving up and fighting Chimaev? What do you think of that at 185? I love that matchup. I honestly forgot about it, but um, yeah, wow, that's... That's crazy. Yeah, I just remembered that. Um, I don't know. That's It's hard to pick on that one, but I wonder, you know, Chimaev had more time to be in shape. Yeah. You see what I mean? He knew he had a fight coming up. I don't – I hope that Kamara was in as good a shape because if so, I mean, that's going to be a tremendous fight, and yeah. I think there's going to be a lot of grappling. Yeah. And, and I wonder, too, with the size, I mean, I know Chimaev used to fight at 170, but, you know, he was getting ready for 85. We'll see if that plays a role because, you know, he's, he hasn't fought in over a year. He's got to have bulked up a bit, you'd think, right? I think they'll both perform better at that higher weight class, kind of like Michael Pereira did. Yeah. Uh, oh, Pereira last night. Yeah, that's crazy. Yeah. Yeah. And he looked like a big 185er. He did. Yeah, he looked like a beast. Did you watch the main event last night, by the way? That's a big one in your division. A guy you fought, Edson Barbosa, getting a pretty uh, big win there over Sudik Yusuf. Yeah, I watched that fight. I loved it. And, uh, wow, great fight. I'm glad that they both got that bonus. They deserved it. 
we have a new middleweight champion, Sean Strickland, uh, defeating Israel Adesanya. Big upset. What did you think of his performance, and how surprised were you that he won? Man, I was really surprised that he won, and I'm ashamed to say that because I should have been rooting for him. And I mean, I was rooting for him, but I should have known he was going to go in there and do that. But I'll be honest, I was surprised. He made it look easy, and uh, I wanted him to win. He's my favorite champ right now. <laughs> I tell you, yeah. he's, he's he's awesome. I mean, he, yeah. I mean, I've been supporting him. Yeah, and then you sort of said it there. Uh, you know, you're a fan of, of Sean. What, what about uh, you know? What about him? Do you like? Is it the honesty? Is it the you know? He's kind of a funny guy too. Like, like what really draws you to a guy like Sean Strickland? Well, he's just funny, so that's the first thing. He always gets my attention just with the humor. But um, he's also, uh, you know, he's uncontrollable. He does what what he thinks is the right thing, or uh, I don't know. Just doesn't doesn't seem like somebody who's easily influenced by money or power or anything he just really enjoys what he does and likes being funny with it and so i love watching him yeah no no I, i'm with you there and then another upset we had earlier this year sean o'malley upsetting aljamain sterling i don't think we've spoken since then what did you think of sean getting that win man well first off i was very impressed i mean my goodness um shoot he's he's good that that joker's good man and let me tell you um, of course, I was rooting for Aljo because mm -hmm. um, me and Aljo are buddies. And, of course, I was rooting for Aljo. I'm not going to lie about that. But I tell you what, after watching that, I, I really like that O'Malley. My favorite thing about him is that uh, he went and he got he got some animals. He's got some chickens and stuff. And when I saw that, man, I really – I really started thinking, I, I like this O'Malley. You know, he likes it. Wow, okay, because I remember before there was a bit of a thing between you two, but it seems like now you're kind of on, on his side here. So is that accurate? You know, I was I was uh, critic I criticized him a little bit, but you know what? He he don't he don't deserve that. He's cool, he likes animals and he likes fighting. And uh, we actually have a lot more in common. Have you reached out yeah. to him at all on, on social media? It seems like you guys would get along a little bit. really other than I didn't tell him I said I'm sorry for anything bad I said about you which I just said that uh, Yon was going to whoop him that's what I thought and I was wrong I shouldn't have even said that you know I shouldn't have even said that but that's really other than that I haven't said much bad about him yeah, no, no, for sure. No, it wasn't much. I remember it was just sort of a disagreement you guys had. Uh, just two more quick questions here. Uh, I'm sure you heard about USADA going away in January. What was your reaction to that? And is that something that your management is telling you about, like keeping you in the loop with? Oh, man, there's nothing I can do about that USADA going away. I, I mean, it's, I hope that they are testing for steroids. That's all I've got to say. Because I'm not one to use steroids, but I bet some of my opponents will. Well, I think they're going to use a different uh, testing system now. Instead of USADA, they're using a different company, I think, is, is, is all they're doing. So. Well, that's, that's fine with me. So um, I've never failed a test. Don't plan on it. I always worry about one of my tests being rigged. If they ever say that, that I'm on some type of steroid, I, I'm telling you, it's 100% rigged. 100% rigged. I'm not on steroids. And I can prove it, too, because my nuts are big. Steroids it shrinks your nuts. Right, for sure. For sure. I, can, I, can, I can show anybody that any test against me. I'm not on any type of steroids. I can prove it. Um, and if I get if I got popped for steroids, then follow up tests would prove me. Like if one initial test was bad, I'd do two or three tests. Um. Are you familiar at all with Andrew Tate? I don't know if you've seen him on uh, social media. I was just curious if, you, if you've seen any of his stuff. Yes, and his brother Tristan. Yeah. What, what do you think of that? Because obviously they're being censored a lot and they're saying a lot of different things. Like I was just curious your, your viewpoint on him. Um, I don't think he's that bad of a guy. I kind of like a lot of stuff that he says. Fair enough. Okay. And uh, before we go, how's the farm going? I know that was something that uh, you were dealing with going into the fight. Sounds like everything's good, but how's, how's everything back home? Everything's going good. There hadn't been a lot of rain going on lately, so it's kind of, uh, the pond back there in the back is, is drying up, so that's one of my concerns. I'm praying that we get some rain. Uh, everything else is pretty good, though. I've got some 
pigs to butcher. I've got more than steer to butcher. Uh, the chickens are laying really good eggs, and I'm happy about that. That's good. Any any hunting coming up? I might get to do some deer hunting and squirrel hunting. Squirrel hunting's my favorite, but um, I don't know. I've got to build a house right now too. So. Oh wow. It's, I've got a lot of projects that just got to get done. I don't know if I'll hunt because I mean I'm I'm butchering a 1,200 pound steer, you know, this year. Really? Wow. Okay. When you when you're butchering 1,200 pound steers and six 200 pound pigs, you know, it's like a little bit of deer meat. It's not a huge factor. If I had the time, I would go get some deer meat. What's hard for me is actually holding the amount of meat that I'm capable of holding. Uh, I have right now. I have two freezers. I'm looking to get more when the house gets built, but I've got two freezers. But my eventual uh, what's going to happen for me to procure the amount of meat that I need to, I'm going to build a smokehouse, a walk-in smokehouse. Nice. Okay. Right. It's going to be powered by a wood wood stove, and that wood stove is going to sit about a foot off the ground, and then it's going to take a 90. That pipe, that chimney is going to take a 90, go up under a smokehouse. It's a walk-in building. 15 foot high with nothing but trays, racks, and I mean, you'll, you'll use a ladder to get up to the top and you put racks of meat or vegetables, whatever you're wanting to smoke, you'll put it in a whole room. And uh, th that's my eventual method for procuring all this meat that I have. But yeah, I've got cows, brother, and you're talking about hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of pounds of meat. So, uh, but hopefully, I do have enough time to get a couple deer too i didn't last year no i know you're a busy guy so how does that impact like when you want to fight like do you have sort of an ideal time when you want to take your next fight with all this other stuff going on or do you kind of wait to see what happens with the fight stuff first and then plan around it yeah i'll, I'll plan everything else around the fight because the fights are so important but i can't fight for at least five more weeks so yeah uh, but i am getting myself ready i'm running lifting weights staying ready yeah and making time for interviews, Bryce. Really appreciate it, man. I'll let you go. Uh, if there's anyone you'd like to thank before we get out of here, any sponsors or any social media you want to mention, I'll give you the last word. Shoot, I want to thank Realtree, uh, Big Lee, Jocko, uh, uh, Dakota, Pure Bison. That's They've been sending me bison. I'm telling nice. you, it's, it's delicious. Uh, Colorado Craft Beef. Um Dude, I got a lot of sponsors. Uh, Timothy Hill Ranch. Timothy Hill Ranch is a uh, kind of a not foster, kind of a foster care type thing for kids that have got. Some of them have been abused. Some of them have been a little bit in trouble with the law. It's just a mix of kids that need a little bit of help, but they're, they're they don't need to go to prison. You know, they don't need to go to jail. We're keeping these kids out of jail at Timothy Hill Ranch, giving them a second chance uh, to learn skills like how to tend animals, how to mow yards. Uh, they, how to build, how to grow crops. Those kids at Timothy Hill Ranch, man, they learn a lot of stuff that's going to help them the rest of their life. And I've I, I the kids at Timothy Hill Ranch to read scripture and we uh, do workouts. So that's, that's great. Part, so that's my part with Timothy Hill Ranch. That's in Searcy, Arkansas. So stuff like that is what keeps me going. And they've sponsored me too. And uh, I've, I've got a lot of sponsors that help me. So thank you. God bless all y'all. Uh, thank you, Matt Weibel, and thank you for having me on the show, Mr. Lynch.